Good Tuesday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking the live and beautiful look at the Georgia National Fairgrounds in Houston County. The time is now 631 AM here on this February the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Wanye Reese. Thank you so much for continuing to stay with us before you head out the door. It might be a day full of love, but it's a morning full of cold in Central Georgia, Alex. That's right. Definitely a day to dress in layers across the area because while we're in the 30s right now, we're going to be talking about 70s later on today. But here's the sunrise I was talking about out in the east. Eastern sky I give it about 30 minutes and we will have some serious light across central Georgia 36 in Macon 39 in Warner Robins 36 in Dublin and in Perry 37 waking up in Baldwin County this morning 38 in Crawford County 35 down in Peach County 37 in Jones County and 36 in Hawkinsville How about 35 down in McRae this morning. Now we don't have any rain out there barely anything in the way of cloud cover this morning. You've got to go back into Alabama parts of southwest Georgia to find that. Temperatures much warmer off to the west. Also some rainfall off to the west. That is what's going to move its way towards central Georgia by the time we get to the end of the week. But for today, for Valentine's Day, going with 72 under partly cloudy skies later on this afternoon. But coming up in a few minutes, we will talk more about that late week rain chance late Thursday into Friday and the all important weekend forecast. I've got much more on that coming your way here in just a few moments. Thank you, Alex. This morning, a broken water main is fixed in Baldwin County and schools there are open again today after an unexpected day off yesterday. Our morning reporter TJ Anthony joins us live in studio with an update on the latest water problems going on in Milledgeville. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, Wani. Look, while the broken line is fixed, there's also a boil water advisory in effect for the areas that lost water. In addition to closing schools just yesterday, the water main break left some parts of a hospital and a chemical manufacturer just without water. Now, the city manager, Hank Griffith, says crews fixed the problem Monday evening and the water treatment plant knew there was an issue around 5 p.m. Sunday. The break happened on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and spilled water in the creek nearby. It mainly affected several school buildings, Atrium Health Baldwin, and also a manufacturing company. Griffith says the latest problem was not related to the water main breaks in December, and that's exactly why, homes, why no homes lost water. What a service line is, is a line that comes off of a main, goes to a meter and serves a particular uh, address or particular uh, residence or business. Um, so all of them are not water mains. Uh, most of them that happen, people are never aware. Now today, all schools in the district are open again, but remember the city has issued a boil water advisory for three places affected by the water main break in Milledgeville. That covers any water used for cooking or drinking. Now the city will send a follow up when they get safe water tests and the advisory is over. Wanye, back to you. Thank you, TJ. Sad news to share with you this morning. We learned that Darren Klein, an employee at Kudzu Seafood Restaurant in downtown Macon, passed away from a liver illness. The restaurant shared the sad news to their Facebook page last night. A few weeks ago, bars in downtown Macon put together the Dare to Donate fundraiser in his honor to raise money for a liver transplant. In October, Klein was diagnosed with late stage liver failure. Klein's his family is asking that you keep them in your prayers. They remembered Aaron for telling everyone to make good choices here at 13. And personally, we are sending our prayers to his family and the Kudzu family as well. We're still waiting to learn why it took Bibb County deputies hours to respond to the shooting death of a man in Macon. Reports say it took deputies several hours after a shot spotter call to find 39 year old Jimmy Lee Bradbury Jr. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says deputies were alerted about shots at 5.43 a.m. Saturday and then again at 5.44 a.m. The system didn't give the correct address. At 6.25 a.m., the first deputy arrived and found a home shot up. They knocked on the door, checked the home, called Bradbury and got no answer. At 8.18 a.m., a man climbed through the side window to check on his friend. He came out the front door and told deputies Bradbury was dead. He was shot three times. Investigators say they believe Bradbury got shot and killed as he sat in his recliner. So far, there's no word on any arrests. If you have any information, reach out to the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers. Their number is 1-877-68-CRIME. That number again for you, it's at the bottom of your screen. It's 1-877-68-CRIME. Well, we've learned new details about a small store fire in Warner Robins over the weekend. The fire shut down a hub for the city's Hispanic community. The store sold food and made it easy for people to communicate with their families in places like Mexico and Guatemala. The Warner Robins Fire Department got the call to Tienda Ketel after 7 a.m. Sunday. Firefighters found smoke and forced their way in. 
Chief Ross Moulton says it took the crew about five minutes to knock down the fire once they got inside. He says a faulty refrigerator likely caused the fire. While there were no injuries, they also added that everything inside the store, as you can see, is a total loss. It's my understanding there's no structural involvement in the fire. It was mainly the contents. So the fire load was a, a mixed variety that would be consistent with a, a market or a grocery type uh, occupancy. I'll they add the metal building itself doesn't appear to have any major damage. Well, a truck driver moving a storage container is off the hook after a public safety officer found deadly drugs in a unit he was hauling. The Georgia Department of Public Safety says they pulled the man over for following too closely to a car in Peach County. During the stop, a narcotics detection dog alerted near one of the storage units on the truck. Law enforcement found five grams of suspected pure fentanyl plus two grams of heroin and other drugs. The Facebook post says the driver had no connection to the drugs. It's 637 this morning. Make it Bib commissioners will hear a presentation from a company to install security cameras around sections of downtown Macon. Mayor Lester Miller says he wants these tag reading flock cameras placed downtown along Riverwalk and in Carolyn Creighton Park. The mayor's proposal says it's because of recent high profile crime in the area. The county would get the camera system from LaGrange based company adapt to solve. The company says it works with local governments all over the state to provide security solutions. Isaiah Thompson works at Valdino's downtown. He says he's not sure if it's needed, but he thinks it could help out. The other day I had a friend come back inside the store. He told me he almost got hit by a car. So if the security cameras can catch it, like if somebody did happen to get hit, then they can kind of see what happened. The proposal says the money will come out of the county school zone camera budget. Going over to Houston County, Robbins Air Force Base continues to make history. It reactivated the 728th Air Control Squadron. Yesterday, nearly 50 people became members of Robbins new Battle Management Control Squadron. They plan to see a team of about 200 people within the next two years. This team helps with a new high tech command called the Advanced Battlefield Management System. They will work with advanced technology to keep up with the growth of the forces overseas. Once operational, the unit will be able to control aircraft around the globe from here at Robbins. As they begin, a lieutenant colonel that we spoke with says some crews will deploy to spots around the world. The better that we can uh, streamline and consolidate and cohesively work as a team, uh, we'll make sure that we're able to, to you know, defend the nation for the American people and make sure that uh, the Constitution still, still uh, stands and the flag still waves. Right now, the squadron's facility is under construction and should be ready by 2027. This is a milestone for projects like the base's first E-11 aircraft, which replaced the old E-8 planes used by the J-Stars. We should see the first one arrive this year. Love is love, and there's a special match out there for everyone. Here are the love stories of two couples who found their soulmates in two completely different ways up next. Plus, there's a few things that you can do to celebrate Valentine's Day today where you can spread the love to those in need and other events. It comes your way next. The time is now 639. Alex has your full forecast. Yeah, good morning, Wanya. The sun beginning to come up over Macon. Check out this shot. It's only going to be a matter of time before we see the sun itself rise, but a lot of orange in the sky. If you see any great sunrises around your area, don't be afraid to take a picture of it and share it with us in the 13 WMAZ Weather Network Facebook group. Waking up to 36 right now in Macon. The winds are calm, so it feels like that 36 degree temperature. 39 in Warner Robins, 36 in Cochran, 41 over in Vidalia, 37 in Swainsboro, and waking up to 30. 34 up in Jasper County this morning. No rain to speak of here in central Georgia. You've got to go back off to the west to find cloud cover and then rainfall even further to the west. Clouds in Alabama, Mississippi this morning. Rain back into Arkansas, Missouri and over into Oklahoma and Texas. That is our next weather system that's beginning to get its act together and move east, producing some severe weather between here and there. But by the time it gets here, it will just be rainfall on Friday morning. So through the day today, talking about temperatures into the 60s very quickly. There we are at the noon hour when you're joining us for midday. I'm going to be saying, well, that was quite the warm up, right? Already in the 60s across central Georgia. And I do think we get into the 70s later on this afternoon with an increasing wind. Uh, it could be gusty at times today. And then once we get into, I, or before we get into that, I know this says upper 60s. I think we're going to get into the low 70s later today. 
But then we get into uh, tomorrow morning, a shower or two across central Georgia, uh, the northern parts of central Georgia, say Monroe, Jasper, Putnam counties. The rest of us should be dry through the full day on Wednesday. And then by the time we get to Thursday morning, that's going to be our transitional day. Waking up overcast before that line of rain moves in overnight Thursday into Friday. Likely a wet Friday morning commute across central Georgia before it begins to pull through and we clear out for the afternoon and evening hours, setting the stage for a dry but cooler weekend here in the central parts of the peach state with just a few passing clouds at times. Now, as I alluded to, that system that's back off to the west is going to pose a severe weather threat today in parts of Arkansas and Texas. Tomorrow, that's going to translate towards, uh, say, Mississippi, Alabama, or actually offset all that by day. This is going to be Thursday, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee. And then by the time we get to Friday morning, the front itself will be pulling into central Georgia. We are clipped by level one there. All in all, I am not all that concerned about a severe threat. Today, Valentine's Day. After all, let's take a look at that hour by hour forecast. 30s this morning giving way to 70s later on today under partly cloudy skies. So a day to dress in layers because that jacket you're wearing this morning you are not going to need for the afternoon. 72 being the high temperature will make it feel like spring under partly cloudy skies and the warming trend will continue into the week. 78 by the time we get to Thursday. The cold front arrives Thursday night into Friday morning. Back to 61 for a high Friday afternoon and evening. Cooler this weekend, 57 the high on Saturday. Thank you, Alex. As we head to break, it's time for another Black History Moment. Today, we remember one of Viv's legendary school principals, Leontine Espy. Born in 1932, she was an educator for more than 40 years. She was known for her unique combination of firmness and love. Her beautiful soprano voice was heard as she was invited to sing around Macon churches. In February of 2016, Epsi was recognized by Macon Viv County for her decades of service to kids. Espy died on December the 12th of 2016. To learn more about SB, just text MOMENTS to the number on your screen, 478-752-1309. We have a special section of our website dedicated to this series. We'll send that link directly to your phone. Stay with us, Central Georgia.